Hello. If you're watching the replay, make sure you say hello. Share to group. Oh look, I can do that. Amazing. I don't know why I've never seen that option, or at least not this past week. Cool. Hi, Heidi. <clears throat> Hi, Sue. So I titled this one, You Keep Getting Splinched. <laughs> um, I was chatting with a, um, she's in one of the mastermind groups that I work with. And she couldn't stay on for the whole live call that we were doing. So um, I had her message me to talk about what's going on with her. And one of the things that came up with with our conversation, hi, Lisa, was about how she's like, I'm really excited about this new idea, this new venture that I'm starting, or, you know, you can take these things and apply them to any area for you. So I make this super specific so you can take what I'm talking about and apply it to stuff in your life, right? What is uh, personal becomes universal. So she was talking about how she's got this awesome business adventure that she started and she's super excited about it, but she's also feeling a lot of caution and a lot of like hesitation because she's struggling to really open up to, um, to get her hopes up, to get really excited about it, to actually fully really like be in it and be as open about it as she wants to be because in the past she's been hurt. Like opening up again after being hurt in the past um, you know, I've heard that. I've dealt with that myself. I've heard that before. And I think it's a very common thing. We're like, well, I've been hurt so many times in the past that um, it's hard for me to open now. It's hard for me to do that and to open again and risk that. And it makes me feel very vulnerable. And when we feel vulnerable, it's because we think something is at risk. And typically it's like our heart that's at risk, right? Because if you fully open and you let yourself get excited and you let yourself really like be in it, there's, there's, we believe there's this potential of getting hurt again, of um, our heart could be broken, uh, we could end up disappointed, frustrated, um, failing, you know, losing something that we value, missing out on something. So I hear this a lot, but it was really interesting to, to talk with her about this and to really start to look at what's going on and after the conversation, you know, we cleared through some stuff. She felt really great at the end of the, the conversation, which is really cool. I love the work that I do because it, it doesn't take long to get the shift that you're looking for. And um, afterwards, I was kind of sitting there like, you know, I hear that a lot, that we're afraid to open up after getting hurt. And like, why? Why is this so hard? Why are we so afraid? And why am where am I now that allows me to, to not be so afraid to open, to not be like, I'm open all the time now. I I've, I've, don't remember the last time that I closed off from something um, or didn't allow myself to be fully expressed. And that's that's different, that's a unique experience. So I was really starting to look at like, what's different about this and how does this work? And this this analogy and the vision from Harry Potter that's like, you've, you've been, you could be splinched, which is um, if you haven't seen Harry Potter, uh, they can apparate basically teleportation from one point to the next where for to um, someplace new. And uh, you can also take somebody with you. You can apparate with somebody else. So there's a scene in one of the later movies. I think it's like the last one or something. It's one of the Deathly Hallows ones. Um, they are apparating. Um, actually, they are. They take the flu powder, so they go through the chimney and they like transport to where they're supposed to go. But they have to quickly apparate to someplace else. And there's three of them, and they start to like. They get to their landing. They apparate out to their new location, and they get there. And one of them has been injured. One of them has like his ear has been like chopped off, pretty much. You know, that like cut on the side of his head. And this analogy came to me because it's he was apparated because he wasn't fully in the space. He wasn't fully committed to it. He wasn't aware necessarily because whoever was you know, driving was in charge, um, but he wasn't fully in it. So like part of him got kind of left behind and when they twist and apparate out, it's sliced because this part wasn't fully in, right? Wasn't fully in this space. I was like, oh, okay. So, 
this analogy resonates because we have been splinched. We have been hurt in the past because we're not fully in. We have one foot out and one foot in all the time. And that is super uncomfortable. We think we're protecting our selves. We think we're playing it safe. We think we're being smart. Um, but actually what we're doing is playing to a lot of fears, playing to a lot of um, doubt, because going all in on something, whether it's a relationship, a business idea, a fun adventure, does not mean that you just like throw yourself in and you end up drowning and you get beaten down and bombarded and people trample you and you just have to like, like full, it doesn't mean full on risking everything. And like for a business adventure, let's say you're starting a new business, it doesn't necessarily mean jumping in and putting all of your eggs in one basket. It doesn't mean uh, deciding to just like jump in and then let everybody else take over and take from you and roll steamroll over you so that you get squashed. Being all in and being fully open does not mean risking being hurt. But we, we seem to believe that. We seem to believe that when we go into something and we're all in, that means we're open and we're waiting for somebody to take a shot at us. We're waiting to be hurt in some way. What going all in means is that you trust in yourself 100% and you back your own boundaries and you speak for yourself and you know who you are and you take one step at a time for who you are and what you want and what you believe in. Going all in with something means that you trust in your own guidance and your own decisions and in your own ability to be able to stand up for yourself. See, because if your heart gets broken, it's not the other person that did it. It's not the other person that broke your heart. It's not the other person that broke your trust. You broke it. Because I can guarantee that if we start to analyze and look backwards, there are red flags, there are moments when you knew something wasn't quite right, but you didn't listen to yourself. There are times in conversations when, uh, this is really common with women, but it's people in general, um, in conversations when we don't communicate clearly what our own desires are, what our own boundaries are, what we're asking for. We're not willing to hold our boundaries for fear of being labeled a bitch, for being labeled a hard ass, for being labeled a control freak. But when you go all in on yourself, especially with something um, like when you're all in on yourself and then you choose to become a part of a relationship or start a business venture, there's nothing like you become unshakable because it's not dependent upon anybody else. It's dependent upon you being willing to stand up for yourself, to speak for what you want, to hold your own boundaries, to really own that like I am excited about this and I love that. See, we end up getting splinched because we're judging ourselves too harshly. We end up getting hurt because we are not being true to ourselves. We're settling for less. We're ignoring red flags. We're not trusting our own intuition and our own inner guidance and inner knowing. We're doing things that we don't, we, like we're saying yes when we mean to, when we really want to say no, or we're saying no when we really want to say yes. There's so much turmoil and miscommunication because you've got one foot outside and one foot inside and it's it hurts. That's what hurts. Being all in is easy and it feels amazing because you're like even 99% in hurts because there's still that 1% that ends up getting splinched because it's not in, it's stretched out, it's on the other side, it's trying to hang on. That hurts, you're separating part of yourself. Being all in feels easy, it feels good, it feels safe, it feels secure because you know you've got your own back. Now the problem is we don't trust ourselves anymore. Think about it how we raise our kids. Something as simple as a lot of people will ask me like, oh, what do your kids want for Christmas? Oh, what is? do they like this type of food? Do they like that? And like I said earlier in my post about communication, that ask them. But we are taught from a very young age that it's like your parents know you better than you know yourself. So every time somebody's like, oh, hey, little Johnny, do you like broccoli? And they look at their mom like, I don't know, do I? 
their mom is like, oh, yes, you do. And then he may eat it and he's like, this is gross. And we're like, no, no, you like it. Like we, we talk our children out of thinking for themselves, feeling for themselves, knowing themselves. We teach them to be reliant upon their parents. Their parents know them better than the others. Then you go to teachers. Their teachers know what you need to do better than you do. Your boss knows what you need to do better than you do. Bullshit. When you trust yourself, when you have repaired that trust within yourself, nothing external can break that. And you will know what you need to do and you will speak for yourself and you will hold your own boundaries. And it's not that you're you're not, you're never going to not experience pain, right? Did I say that right with that many no's? It's not like you're never going to experience deep emotions and grief and loss and hurt, but experiencing them through the filter of love instead of through the filter of broken trust, broken heart, loss, it's a completely different experience. It's a completely different experience to experience something as intense as say grief through the filter of love than it is to experience it through the filter of loss and pain and hurt and fear and doubt. So when you start to repair yourself, when you repair that trust, when you start to get to know yourself and part of trusting yourself means you trust yourself to speak up for yourself. You trust yourself to honor what your body says yes to, what your body says no to, what excites you and what is gonna drain the hell out of you. You trust yourself to hold your own boundaries. When you know that within yourself at 100%, then there's nothing that can shake that. Then there's no more there's no more doubts about like is this gonna work or am I gonna be okay? It just like business becomes a fun adventure. It becomes something that is truly like this is exciting for right now because it feels really good. And if at some point it turns out that it's throwing red flags at me, then I know I will honor that for myself and I will make a different decision. But we get splinched, we get hurt because we're not all in because we have been taught to not be. We have been taught and conditioned to be closed and that it hurts and it's vulnerable and it's scary and it's not. Being all in is actually the most peaceful and freedom-based experience you could ever have because you're no longer splitting yourself. You're no longer holding one foot outside and trying to make it all work together. Even being 99% in is still painful. 100% in means you are 100% in for yourself. And when you honor yourself and you trust yourself, then you can be 100% in on the great idea you have. And you can let yourself get hopeful and get excited and get passionate about things and open to deeper connections and better communication for yourself. Like It's a totally different experience when you allow yourself to be all in. Take this and go look at relationships in the past. Look at past business ventures. Were you actually 100% in? Past business ventures that I can look at for myself, right? The first couple of businesses that I had and I'm like, oh, they failed. What if I fail again? Like I started this business four years ago, five years ago, this particular one, right? This specific one of coaching, of offering my own packages, my own coaching on my own. Um, and I could say, I could easily look back and be like, well, I failed in the past. What if this one doesn't work? What if I fail again? Like it's hurt in the past and it's such a disappointment and it's so frustrating. And I get like, I can't get my hopes up about this business adventure or this idea because what if it doesn't work? What if it fails? Truth is I can look back and if I'm willing to, I can see that past ventures that failed were ones that I wasn't a hundred percent in on. I had one foot out the door. Relationships that didn't work out, relationships that hurt, I had one foot trying to hold on the outside. Are you willing to be that honest with yourself and start to admit that and acknowledge that? To start to look at where you're not 100% committed because I'm telling you, being 100% in feels so much better. It's so much calmer, it's so much freer, there's so much space because it's you. It's intense confidence in yourself, intense trust, unconditional love. It's freedom at its very core. So if you feel like you've been hurt in the past or you're worried about failing again because you've failed in the past, 
I'm telling you, this is the stuff to start looking at and paying attention to and asking questions to yourself about. Do you actually trust yourself? Do you 100% trust yourself to be able to honor your intuition, honor your own inner guidance, honor what your body wants, say yes when you want it, say no when you don't? Clearly, communicately, communicating clearly, confidently. Are you willing to speak up and hold your boundaries firm no matter what? Because what you believe and what you need and what you want is that important to you? Start to ask those questions. The Being Seen Masterclass that's on December 5th is this type of stuff is what we're diving into. Like you keep getting hurt and you're not jumping 100% in and you're not allowing yourself to open and you're staying closed and you're worried about getting hurt. Worrying about getting hurt and staying closed as a result is what's hurting you. So the Being Seen Masterclass is where we're starting to look at how do you open? How do you repair that trust? Are you willing to look at yourself and see all of you? Are you willing to acknowledge and admit the places that you have broken your trust? Are you willing to start to heal those things? That's what that masterclass is about. That's what it's here for. I'll drop the link below so you can check that out. I know on the sales page, um, it talks about a couple of different things uh, because this it started when we were talking about the bear retreat, um, which I'm super pumped about. That's in March. Uh, includes a boudoir photo shoot for you. Going to do some deep healing work and some pretty cool workshopping type things. Um, that's an all-inclusive retreat. So that's what started this type of conversation. But I understand that that's not till March and the retreat may not be for everyone. So opening the masterclass as a way to start healing now, to start moving forward is something that feels really good and exciting. And it's going to reach more people and, and help more people, which is what I'm here for. So that's on December 5th. Um, at 10 a.m. Eastern, the replay will be available, but these are the pieces that we're starting to come together. I've made several different posts kind of talking about different perspectives and points on it. Ultimately, it's about you reclaiming your own power and understanding your true sense of self-love and really reaching a point where you're willing to look at yourself and start to acknowledge the places where you do need to heal and having some tools and some guidance to be able to start that process with yourself is the intention of the masterclass. It's it's only like two to three hours. So I can't make massive promises about it, but I do know that it is going to be powerful for those that show up to it and bring their energy into the space. Um, but that's also why I highly recommend the Bear Retreat because it's a full weekend, all-inclusive, like lots of really cool stuff is gonna happen in that container. So anyways, both of those things I'll drop the link for. Um, actually, the bear retreat, you just have to message me because I'm not doing a website for it. Um, you know if you're interested in it or not. But the, the master class I'll drop a link for. But these are the questions that you can start to ask yourself and start to look at. You've been splinched. It's time for you to fix it so you don't get splinched anymore. I think that's it for today. Cool. Have a great rest of your day. Be fierce about who you are. Be fierce about what you desire to experience and to have and who you desire to be in your life and embrace your truth.